Pop quiz. What takes dozens, if not hundreds of people to implement, but when done well is scientifically proven to improve almost any aspect of a child's life? If you answered education, you get an A+. Teachers and administrators do a great job supporting our young scholars, but the path to a good education starts way before the first bell rings, with the thoughtful design of the school itself. That's on this episode of Beyond Engineering, a podcast from RTM Engineering Consultants. Hi, I'm Celine Dirks, your host for Beyond Engineering, where we share stories about innovative design, collaborative development, and exacting execution that helps buildings, businesses, and the people working inside them work better. Today, RTM Principal Catherine Dutchaver and Robin Randall, Director of Learning at Leggett Architects, continue their discussion about what makes RTM and Leggett such a powerful partnership. Now, they turn their focus to Robin's area of expertise, how RTM and Leggett collaborate to create schools that are safe, comfortable, and support all types of learners. But first, Kat invites us to zoom out a little. So you were quoted recently... And the quote that is, the intersection of academia and architecture is where the magic happens. And what do you mean by that? That's where the magic happens. <laughs> to me, magic, and this is what energizes me about my job still, the magic is when we move a project one step forward. We flip a classroom and we do something different that we've never done before. And so what academia informs is that We can do more research and theoretical discovery in academia, and then we need an opportunity to test it. And that's when practice and purpose happens together. And then we can try something in reality and see if it works. And what's really important is that you do a pre-occupancy and a post-occupancy study. So the pre-occupancy happens when we're doing that collaborative process. We're understanding what the purpose, what the mission, the students and the teachers have for the project. And then we can document this. This is the design intent. We want to make a difference in these five ways, right? So we document that as the purpose statement of the project. And then once the project is designed and it's built and the users are using it, we love to go back in and do a post-occupancy study to understand if our five points are actually being achieved. And what's fun is to have an academic come back and help us with that so that it's unbiased. So we work with Northwestern and a behavioral scientist come back and evaluate a building. And she actually discovered that we had lowered bullying in the way that we've designed the building. We were talking about how I became an architect with a colleague of mine. And I'm the first woman in my family actually both sides, to not be an educator. I have all these resources that inform me, but it's also understanding how important education is and that it's the game changer for poverty. It's the game changer for community. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that tie of how important education is maybe has drawn you to developing and trying to better education facilities versus any other industry? There's lots of research that supports If a child can be supported and understands that curiosity is important and that education is important, they can change everything about their life. And so what we want to do first off is do no harm. Mm -hmm. We don't want to create any barriers to learning in an environment. We don't want to have an environment that's too loud for someone that sounds sensitive. We want to create an environment that's good for extroverts like me or introverts like my brother. So we want everybody to feel comfortable in an environment. And so always having that radical empathy where you put someone else's shoes on, but you also put on their lens and try and imagine how they're going to use the space. A lot of times at the high school level, we have the main kitchen for school districts. And so we have to think about not just the bus routes or the parking lot for the teachers, but also how do we get any of the if you want to call them catering trucks to come in, because this main school kitchen serves the rest of the district. They cook everything at the high school, and they send it out to the warming kitchens at the elementaries. How are we transporting the food? And how are the students able to use the cafeteria in an efficient way? We also want those students to get excited about 
healthy choices. Mm -hmm. So at Rock Island High School, the new cafeteria remodel, all of that kitchen area has been upgraded. And just thinking about how students like in high school, they like to have a variety of environments that they can eat in. Mm -hmm. So there's high tops, there's low tops, there's stairs, a very grown up space that feels like a Barnes and Noble cafe. So it's a fun way to innovate. Again, that design magic, a little bit of thought process around how the space is going to be used helps transform the way it works. And you brought up Rock Island High School. Mm -hmm. Another thing we did at Rock Island High School was that new front entrance where we put on something that looked much more modern onto a historical landmark building and with moving the offices and giving that secured entrance. Previously, the administration was remote. It was actually up on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And so there was no way for them to supervise the entry and have a controlled entry. And so they had someone assigned to the front door. And so we moved the front door and grouped all the offices and then really opened up that whole area for student life spaces. And that whole thread just dives right through the center of the school. Yeah, that's really nice space now. We've done quite a few projects at community college, and I personally feel that we take similar things that we learn at the high school level, and we just build upon them. Depending on what it is, I feel like it's just bigger, more. It's like the tech spaces at a high school, okay, this is just to give students a taste of this. And so they have a smaller classroom wall, we do more innovative work when we take this to the community college level because we say, mm -hmm. okay, now they're going to actually get a technical degree on this. Mm -hmm. And so we'll find that the college will want to have more technology put into the space. They're not going to have this as like a side note for if it's automotive repair. They're going to actually have a vehicle exhaust system that's under the slab. They want this built in and, and like the libraries much larger than a school library, which we can talk about with Harper College, with yeah. that library. Yeah. So that's a really fun story because we totally transformed a 1960s building into the state-of-the-art library and bringing in technology in all levels. There's study spaces, there's nooks and crannies for the introverts, there's shared small group spaces, there's classrooms. The stair leads you from all of these levels but it also has little alcoves off the stair for shared space and learning. It just, it captivates the community. It's become the centerpiece for the community college. It's where all the students want to go and hang out. It's mm -hmm. a great meeting place for every level of student. And whatever you're studying, there's something for you in that library. But you mentioned the technologies. College of Lake County's Advanced Technology Center is another renovation, but that one was renovated from an old Lowe's hardware store. And we converted that into this very high tech, advanced technology center because we worked with over 20 local businesses to see who are the students that you're needing to employ. How do we make those employees that you're in need of? And that survey informed the whole development of the project there's communal spaces where business owners can come in and interview students and see what they're doing. There's a way that classroom space is definitely learning on display. All of the equipment that's in that building is state of the art and ventilated and has all these elements to it that just inspire the students to, to learn and figure out how to use these spaces. What I find is there has to be some sort of hands-on learning to inspire students. Even high-level, high-performing high schools, they're still putting in auto labs because sometimes seniors, that's their favorite class. Even if they're taking AP science or AP math, they still need that hands-on space where they can just decompress and do something that's hands-on. And um, we've seen recently with North Scott with the Regional Innovation Center, you have a high school that's combining with a local community college, Eastern Iowa Community College, where Eastern Iowa is saying, hey, we need more space for these programs, and we're willing to share those spaces with you so that we can gain the attention of the high school students to go directly into the program. They have a need. Industries are coming to them saying, we need these graduates. So they're mm -hmm. trying to find people to come into the program to do this. So here's a building where... It's a combined high school and community college building that I think is wonderful for the community just because that's going to show kids that 
or in high school that maybe have thought about not going on to any form of college or going straight into a four-year college, hey, I don't have to do that. College is really expensive. Could I stay local and go into this community college? Which I think is wonderful to give those options to students. And some of those training are actually paid. And yes. so it's paid positions leading to a job. It's an innovative way, and those are high-paying positions. It's always just about educating the students. So I feel like our client relationship, there's a lot of give and take. So a lot of times we will approach the legate and say, okay, what was your vision for this? Because we want to make the vision which has already been presented to the school district. We want to make that happen. And right away, because we know their style so often, I'll say, okay, we want tall ceilings in all of the classrooms. We want big spaces. And I'll ask, how much room do we have to the next level or to deck? (laughs) And we will have to work together saying, okay, you're at 11 feet. I need you to drop six inches. And we'll lay that out and we'll explain why we need those six inches. We understand the reasoning aesthetically behind Mm -hmm. that and why it's good for the end user. A lot of times within ceiling spaces is where we hide the mechanical, Mm -hmm. we hide the HVAC. And by hiding it, we also help damper the noise, which is very important for classrooms. So keeping it above ceiling, I need to know how much space do I have between the top of my ceiling grid and the bottom of the roof or the floor above, whatever is above us. How much space do I have? Mm -hmm. And I try to work with and explain, this is as tight as I can smush my duct work. I can't go any further than this. Mm -hmm. And just communicate that back and forth. And Leggett's awesome to work with because they'll say, okay, I understand that. Leggett's also very good at planning for the systems. So that's a huge benefit in working with Leggett is that they already educate themselves. They have lunch and learns. Our team has come in to do lunch and learns. And when they hear about a new technology, they're very quick to come and ask and be like, what's your opinion on this technology? What does it require? Right. And so I appreciate that with Lega that they are always trying to stay on top of what's going on so that they can know to bring that into their design and plan accordingly. And it's fun to work back and forth. So I always imagine that the mechanical system, the plumbing system, it's like the human body, right? We have a structure, we have an envelope, our skin, we have the systems all working inside us. And, it, and you have to allow for room but you can prioritize space. So say we want the classrooms to have that higher ceiling, then what if the entry into the classrooms is lower so that the mechanical system can be, all the ductwork can be located in an eight foot ceiling Mm -hmm. over the storage area, over the toilet room area, over the main entrance of the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of an arm wrestle sometimes. In those bigger spaces that can handle the loudness, we can expose the ductwork. And when we do that, Kat and her team is so good at just making it still look good. If you're going to expose it, you almost have to coordinate it even more because you're going to be able to see it and you want it to look clean and modern and not confusing up there. Mm -hmm. And we've even color coded it sometimes in technology spaces so it can be a teaching tool. It's also about the environment on the inside of the classroom. And we talked about how to keep the classroom ceiling high and then potentially find a lower area within the classroom or at the entry to handle the mechanical system. But think about also where that 11 feet hits the exterior wall. And so that impacts because you want floor to ceiling glass or you want sills and then have the glass go all the way up to the ceiling so that you can maximize that natural light. And that affects the way the exterior looks. So often we set datum points of where the mullions need to be, where the sills need to be, and they create a band across the exterior, or we develop vertical elements that are really important to the exterior. And those datums start to drive the way the exterior looks and then informs the interior. So if we have to drop them six or eight or 12 inches, it impacts the way the exterior looks, it impacts the way the interior looks. So we can work with mechanical and electrical and see if there's a new detail that we develop in the classroom too. There's lots of different ways that we can handle, but just arbitrarily setting a different height in a classroom impacts a lot more than just saying, let's just reduce it six inches. I totally get that. And so Mm -hmm. we always want to come to you with a question Mm -hmm. and Typically, we try to come to you approaching it saying, can we have another six inches? If we can't, this is our solution. Uh And so it's a back and forth because we don't want to come with a question 
with no other option. Yeah. Because it has to be collaborative. We need right. to make sure this works. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, we need everything to work together. You don't want to mm-hmm. have your floor coming out into the middle of a window. Right. Like, that's going to look horrible right. from the outside. Yes. And, and everyone in the community is going to see that and think about what did our tax dollars right go towards. Right. But one other thing that I remember that we did, it was in an auditorium highly coordinating these, because in auditorium performing arts centers, they'll have real high ceilings and they have usually different curved ceilings, mm-hmm. very just really cool architectural elements. So we're keeping everything closely together above something that we can't procode to work exactly between them is sprinklers. And so we'll talk with the architect saying, oh, you're going with a, a wooden slat ceiling. That's going to look awesome. Per code, we have to have white covers and they can't yes. be painted. How do you feel about that? Yes. And just bring that to their attention of a code requirement saying, hey, it works. It functions. Are you going to be okay with the appearance of this? Mm-hmm. And that's something that our like it then can take in and say, all right, maybe we don't want to go with a dark wood. Maybe we want to go with a lighter wood so it blends together more. I feel like what you're speaking to is we've talked a lot about big picture items, right? Mm-hmm. But what you're talking about is everything. It gets down to the details. And if that detail is wrong, you're going to see that every time you walk in the space. Oh, yeah. So yeah. just knowing what's available how we can coordinate it, and wh- how it's going to impact the aesthetic of the building. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But it's just keeping that in mind and working together and mm-hmm. knowing they're going to care about this. Mm-hmm. And I should care about it as well. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't just be an engineer just being like, well, sprinkler head works. Who cares? Right. It's going to do its job. Yes. <laughs> we want it to work cohesively because the end client comes in. We want the end client to be happy. We want Mm -hmm. it to be functional. And I love that you come to the table with an option or two, because that way we can sit around the table and solve it there. There's no wrong or right. We're creating this together and we're making it better. And I think we're up to the challenge. We're up to making a difference in that design by being informed people. And the smarter we are about what we need to do, the smarter the design is. Are you launching a career as an engineering technologist? Or are you a proven professional in the engineering fields looking for new ways to advance your career? Consider joining RTM Engineering Consultants. We support your growth as you sharpen technical skills, deepen business experience, and diversify capabilities across services, specialties, and markets from coast to coast. Our mentors are seasoned professionals committed to sharing expertise and passing knowledge from one generation of engineers to the next. Visit our careers page at rtmec.com to explore employment opportunities. That's rtmec.com. Learn why industry authorities consider RTM a great place to work grow, and advance. Meantime, plan to join us again for another episode of Beyond Engineering, a podcast from RTM Engineering Consultants.